In 2006, Pluto lost its official status as a planet. Since then, the tiny planet at the far edge of the star system has belonged to the group of dwarf planets. Pluto shares this designation with other microplanets located even farther out in the so-called Kuiper Belt. Shortly after its degradation to dwarf planet, Pluto seemed to show the researchers the planet's stink finger because the small planet suddenly revealed a whole set of surprises that researchers hadn't counted on. Now the scientists of NASA are taking another look at Pluto and are even considering sending a probe to the outermost edge of the solar system. In this video, you can find out which recent discoveries have got scientists so excited. But before we start, we'd like to ask you to support our work by subscribing to our channel preferably right now, by activating the notification bell and giving us a like at the end of the video if you enjoyed it. In case the facts and figures about Pluto are no longer front and center in your memory, we'll first refresh your knowledge about the dwarf planet. Pluto, the surprise planet. In 1930, the discovery of the ninth planet in the solar system was a sensation. 76 years later, an international commission of astronomers decided that Pluto was not really a planet at all. The rather small planet, 3.7 billion miles from the Sun, was more like a whole host of other discovered minor planets dancing at the far edge of the solar system. Astronomers had the choice to include all these minor planets in the list of official planets or to draw a strict boundary. One decided for the border, and on top of of it also to shift the ninth planet behind this line. Since then, our solar system has officially only eight planets, and Pluto is one of many dwarf planets. The discussions about this classification have not abated ever since, with many demanding that Pluto be redesignated the ninth planet. Since researchers have found out new exciting facts about Pluto thanks to the New Horizons probe, this is becoming more likely. This is because Pluto has shown that it's not just any small planet, but much more a surprise package. In the past 20 years, studies have shown that Pluto emits extremely strange gravitational waves and that contrary to previous expectations, the planet has an active core. Hardly had researchers digested these new results when the dwarf once again provided new headlines. Pluto exhibited a unique anomaly when interacting with solar winds. As if that wasn't enough, Pluto topped it off with this when a group of researchers announced that a flowing underground ocean very likely exists on the planet. The research world was beside itself. Water on Pluto in this image from New Horizons, astrogeologists could immediately see the structures of an ocean and water frozen on the surface. New Horizons further found evidence for tectonic activity on the planet's cold surface. This phenomenon, too, can really only be explained by a subsurface ocean of liquid water as well as an active core. Computer simulations by a research team of Japanese as well as U.S. experts provided convincing evidence that an insulating layer of gas hydrates could keep water from freezing beneath Pluto's icy surface. A computer simulation that examined a time scale of 4.6 billion years was able to reconstruct Pluto's evolution from the early days of the solar system. The simulation provided researchers with exciting details about the thermal and structural evolution of Pluto's interior and the time required for a subsurface ocean to freeze and form the ice shell that covers it today. More precisely, scientists simulated two scenarios, one in which an insulating layer of gas hydrates existed between the ocean and the ice shell, and one in which it did not. If Pluto had a dead core and was completely frozen through, the ice-covered region should appear in the shape of a dented peach. But Pluto's surface looks different. Presumably, a bubbling core, similar to that of our Earth, keeps the dwarf planet's ocean moist. To clarify Pluto's exact composition, another probe would have to observe the planet for several years. That is exactly what is expected to happen in the coming decades. Could there be life on Pluto? Yes, it's absolutely possible, and of course, it would be a sensation if NASA finally found life outside Earth. Pluto is not alone on the list of celestial bodies with the possibility of life at this time. In recent decades, 
researchers have found evidence for liquid water as well as entire oceans on quite a few minor planets, and the moons of the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn, and thus also for the foundations of organic life. For a long time, the outer objects of the Kuiper Belt, which now includes Pluto, did not really seem to be worthwhile targets for researchers searching for microorganisms or answers to the origin of life. But that is exactly what is changing now. Jupiter's moons Ganymede and Europa also show evidence of ice volcanism, water, and perhaps the simplest life such as single-celled organisms or lichens. Saturn's moon Enceladus is a hot candidate for finding first life beyond Earth, and Titan may also harbor life. Eris, the second largest dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt after Pluto, could also harbor living water under a layer of ice. German engineers are currently developing a drill that should be able to drill into icy moons or thick layers of ice on Pluto, Eris, or even Mars. The ice layer can be several hundred feet or even miles thick. To get to the presumed liquid water would require some effort and the cost and technical challenge of these missions would be enormous. So NASA will have to think carefully about which of the candidates to drill first. Until now, it was likely that the first drill would be sent to Saturn's moon Enceladus, but that plan could change in favor of Pluto. NASA researchers explained the moons of gas giants like Jupiter's moon Ganymede have subsurface oceans because the planet's tidal forces keep them moving. In contrast, Pluto appears to have a liquid ocean because it probably has an active core. So exploring Pluto could kill two birds with one stone. Details on the planned mission are not yet available, however. Pluto would also be an increasingly interesting target for a probe for other reasons. The Solar Wind Phenomenon New Horizons was able to collect data from Pluto's atmosphere for the first time during its flyby in July 2015 with another big surprise. David J. McComas, professor of astrophysical sciences at Princeton University, framed the discovery in the published study saying, this is a type of interaction that we have never seen before anywhere in our solar system. Previously, researchers had assumed that the solar wind was virtually stripping Pluto's thin atmosphere by its force. One could also say that the sun simply blows away the gas ions emanating from the dwarf planet, but this is not so. Thanks to the measurement data from New Horizons, researchers were able to see for the first time that Pluto's gravity is apparently quite sufficient to withstand the solar winds. This means that the tiny planet behaves more like Mars or Earth and not, as previously assumed, like a comet. Like Earth, Pluto has a long plasma tail of ionized atmospheric particles due to the influence of the solar winds. And these are shielded from the flowing solar wind in Pluto by a thin protective shell. The researchers called this unique phenomenon the Pluto pause. Thanks to this strange protective shell, far fewer particles are torn from the atmosphere into space than researchers had originally thought. How Pluto builds this protection, however, is still unclear. Is Pluto actually a double planet? Although Pluto is only a little under 1,243 miles in diameter, it has at least five moons. The exact number is not yet certain, since observing moons so far from Earth is not an easy task. Not to be overlooked, however, is Charon. Pluto's largest moon is about half the size of Pluto itself, making it 27% the size of Earth. Charon shows another peculiarity. It orbits Pluto on a bound orbit, just like the Earth's moon orbits our home planet. So Charon always turns the same side to Pluto. Because of their size and strange dance, Researchers came up with the idea that Pluto and Charon are not a dwarf planet and a moon at all, but in fact a binary planetary system. At the 2006 General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union, experts discussed not only Pluto's demotion to dwarf planet, but also the proposal to classify Pluto and Charon as a double planet. Since the scientists could not come to an answer as to what exactly distinguishes a double planet from a planet-moon system, this question remains open. Strictly speaking, the Earth and the Moon could be a kind of double planet. It has never been sufficiently clarified how our Moon was formed and whether it was not itself at some time a small planet, similar to Pluto, which was captured by the Earth's gravitational pull. Pluto's future in the solar system Pluto itself, 
even with its water occurrence, is still not interesting for humans to colonize. So far out in the cosmos, there would be much too little light for humans, and also energy production would be rather a difficult thing on the dwarf planet. But still, the fact remains that in 5 billion years our sun could inflate slowly to a red giant. Then the sun would gradually turn all inner planets into hellishly hot worlds, and finally swallow them. By the time Earth and Mars have become too hot to inhabit, Pluto would have warmed by about several hundred degrees. With surface temperatures as high as about 81 degrees Fahrenheit, Pluto would be then a possible alternate world. Presumably, humans will have developed the travel technology already in a few decades, to the point where manned flights into the solar system become possible. It's even rather probable that humans will have formed colonies in space in the next 100 or 200 years. If mankind should still be alive in 5 billion years, Pluto could represent, at least for a certain time, an alternative to the Earth within the solar system. Or humans could have already moved to another star system at this time. Do you think that one day humans will colonize other planets and possibly the whole cosmos? Or do you think that technical progress will have reached its limits? and we will be stuck on Earth. Tell us what you think and share your ideas on the topic in the comments. We're glad you watched today and look forward to seeing you next time on Simply Space.